Hey guys, Uncommon Ramen here again. Today we're gonna take a look at Under Falling Skies. Um, I wish I could get a better view of that. There we go, Under Falling Skies. Um, this game was highly anticipated. Uh, it came out, I want to say, close to the 2020 holiday season. So, you know, bled into 2021. Um, but this game actually came out before that in a micro game uh, for, I believe, a contest on BGG, Board Game Geek. Um, and it got redone as this kind of legacy campaign-ish, uh, you know, bigger game um, because it was so well received. And in truth, it is it is just a really incredible design. Um, Under Falling Skies puts you in control of uh, basically Earth, uh, Earth's command to try and uh, thwart an alien invasion that is happening. And it can be played solo, which is why I want to take a look at it. Uh, it's also in a small-ish box. I would say... Um, I would compare this box to maybe the Versus System two-player card game boxes about the same size as that. Um, so it's a little bit bigger. It's not one of those that I would normally, as a solo game, say, okay, you could toss this in your luggage and take it with you. But this is such a great game that I totally would anyway. Um, it's very entertaining. I think the the masterpiece of it all is the the um simplicity of the game itself so let's just take a quick look i'm not going to go into the campaign stuff because i don't want to spoil it for you we're just going to take a look at the components that are not uh still bound together that are part of the original uh the f the the first part of the campaign and the way the the game is supposed to play so we'll take a look at the rule book not going to go into great detail on that. Um, again, mostly just want to show you how well, oops, how well they uh, set it up. Lots of great illustrations in here. Uh, we got some comic stuff for the campaign part of this. And like I said, I don't want to go into great detail about that. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. And then right here, it just basically says stop. Don't go any further. Don't undo all of this stuff because it's part of the campaign. And that's true. You only need this top part right here to play the game. And the game can be played solo. Um, it's probably a better experience solo. Uh, the times that I played it, I played it with my wife. And we just kind of uh, went back and forth on who was going to make the decisions for that particular round, but we collaborated on what those decisions were going to be. So really, it's not meant to be uh, for two people, but you can. I mean, you could play with as many people as you wanted as long as, you know, you had the seats, I guess. So this is the alien mothership as it's coming down. Um, and while it's coming down, it's going to be launching little ships at you. Um there's not much else to say about that. It's a big mothership and it wants to destroy us. And then we have some map tiles. Let me just pull those out. So these are some of the map tiles. Um, as they begin to lighten up, it is an uh, indication of them getting closer to uh, Earth's atmosphere. Or I suppose probably just the sky. Um, above where we're at and as you when you look at this you're going to see a whole a grid system and a whole bunch of symbols um these symbols right here depict where spacecraft can be destroyed um so if you use aircraft um and you use a dice that shows the exact number so like a three here or a six here or a four here um you can destroy ships that occupy this exact space um or, you know, the space, like if you had, if you rolled, um, let's say a four and you had a ship here and a ship here, um, and you use the four in the aircraft space, you would destroy both those ships. <clears throat> These little arrows 
depict um, a shift. So the ship is going, if a ship lands in these little arrows, they're going to shift one space in the direction denoted. So over there. And then these last symbols here, which look like the mothership, are the mothership. And basically, if a ship lands in those spots, um, they're going to the mothership is going to descend a level outside of its normal descension, um, which is that it, every turn it's going to go down a level anyway. And what you're basically trying to do is keep it from coming down. Um, when it reaches this point here, uh, the game ends. And if you did not succeed, then you're then you die. Basically, uh, that is one of the ending ways. Um, you'll see symbols over here on this side as well. Um, these symbols are depicting, like for instance, when the mothership uh, covers this symbol, you're going to receive, or the mothership's going to receive a white ship to deploy. Uh, when it covers this symbol, oh, you can't see those. I'll just show you. Uh, so that right there, that means that it's going to receive a white ship to deploy. When it covers a symbol like this, um, it pushes you back um, on your excavation track. And then right here, um, it pushes you back on your uh, research track. And the research is how you win the game. So throughout the course of the game, you're also going to want to um, put dice in research areas so that you can slowly but surely get up this track. And there's rules that, that basically um, dictate how that works. But essentially, if you put a one or higher in the research, you can place a place your research token on this spot if it was in the previous spot back. So if your research token is here, you can jump up to this spot here by placing a dice with a one or higher value up here. Now, um, let's say your you were your research token was on this three, and you rolled a three, um, and you place that in research. You won't be able to jump, even though this two and this one are the sum of three. Uh, you won't be able to jump to this one, because the die will only ever a single research die will only ever bring you up one spot. So if you put a three in the research station, you'll be able to jump from the three to the two. And then you'll have to research again to jump from the two to the one. Um, and you'll notice that the top value is an 11. So you can't achieve an 11 on a single die. So the way that works, and that top value is the victory condition. If you get the 11, you win the game. And the way that works is you'll see certain research stations have multiple die spots on them so that you can combine the results. So this is your research station and you're going to see right here the excavation token is going to start right here so everything from this excavation token on this way is not active so everything here you cannot use so all you have available to you at the very beginning of this game is an energy production area one research place a place for um, uh, fighter fighter jets and anti-aircraft guns now the anti-aircraft guns they do not at any point in time ever um destroy descending ships um all the anti-aircraft do is slow down the ships as they're descending towards you and what that means is that every time you place a die in one of these locations any ships in that column so the column is straight up um are going to descend the number on the die. So if you place a four in this research area, everything in this column uh, is going to move four spaces down towards you. And that's not necessarily the end of the world. Um, you do have to manage that. Um, as they hit your station, you're going to start taking damage. And that's what this track is. And every time one ship hits your station, you're going to move it down. And once it gets to here, you die. So that's your second way of losing. Um, so you do have to manage how many of them hit your station. Um, ideally, what you want to do is put things in here to kind of manipulate where the ships are going to land so that they land on places where you can use your fighter jets to blow them out of the air. Um, the energy, energy basically 
is how you use abilities. So you'll notice that this creates energy and you'll also notice that these use energy. So the, to use the fighter pilots, you need to create one energy. Um, to use the research here, you have to use two energy. Not create one energy, use one energy. Um, and you start the game right here with two energy. Um, so you want to put dice there to bring yourself up to however much energy you need to a maximum of seven energy. And each of these things kind of does uses energy here and there. This one being the uh, exception, it looks like, yeah. Um, and obviously places that create energy don't use energy. Um, to move your excavation, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to take a single die. You can only use one die per round. Um, and you're going to place it, let's say you rolled a four. You can place it right here and move your excavation token for spaces, thus excavating those that area for you. So those become available to use. Um, it has to be, um, it, you can never excav excavate past where the dice is. So if you have a six and you place it here, um, you can still only excavate the four spaces. Um, but that's just that. Um, what else is there? on here uh, we got energy got that i think that's it really i mean the rest of the the rest of it is just basically rolling dice so i'm going to show you some of these components here these are the components in the first part of the game um the core part so that's your energy tracker this is your research tracker the red ships, they call them purple in the book, uh, but these are not purple. These are clearly red. Um, I'm not colorblind. These are clearly red. Uh, the red ships are the ones that are always going to spawn. The white ships are the ones that are going to spawn when the mothership passes certain parts of the board. When you kill a white ship or a white ship crashes into you... Um, they they get removed from the board completely um, and they will not respawn unless uh, the board says they do. Whereas the red ships, they will continuously uh, respawn and uh, fall on you. And then this final one is the uh, little damage, your H headquarters damage cube to keep track of how much damage you've taken. The last guy in here is an orange ship. It's part of the campaign. I have not started the campaign, so I don't know um, how he spawns or what his rules are. But I just wanted to go ahead and show you the component anyway, because I think it's really cool. And like the ships, oh, the ships are probably my favorite part of this. They did, they did a really, really great job with component quality here. Just a, it's really incredible. Okay, and then we're going to take a look at the dice. The dice, I'm a little bit disappointed by, but we'll just, we'll go over that in a moment. So first off, come on. First off, we have the excavation token. So this is your little excavator, and this is what you're using to get further into your base so that you can unlock more places. Some of them are a little bit more efficient. Some of them are a little bit bigger so that you can um, research and or, you know, blow up ships and or you know, create energy to help in your fight. And these are the dice. The blue dice are part of the campaign, so I'm just gonna show you those really quickly. And then I'm just gonna toss them off to the side. The blue dice, um, I'm not sorry, I'm not talking about the blue dice specifically. The dice are all wooden dice. And that's kind of where I'm a little bit disappointed. Um, they went through the trouble of creating these really great plastic components for the ships and all of your markers and then the dice are wood and I don't know I don't know maybe that maybe I'm just being snobbish but I just think that they could have easily done plastic that's just my thought I I like plastic dice more than I like wooden dice but yeah wooden dice you have gray dice and white dice um <clears throat> you're gonna roll all five of these dice but what the difference between the dice is that when you're placing a white die, right after you've placed the white die, 
you can choose to re-roll any dice that you have left that have not been placed. So if you placed a white die um, and you did not like the results on some of the remaining dice that you have, you can re-roll those to try and get better results. That's the only difference between the dice. There is the dice. I don't know about the blue dice rules because like I said, I have not started the campaign, but those are the blue dice. And then the other thing that I'm gonna go into really quickly is that um, the core part of this still comes with um, different difficulty levels. So we have side C and I'll show you right there. Side C is, is designated by that little triangle. Um, so this is side C as well. Um, you'll see here Roswell, side AB, and then a more difficult Roswell. And then if you look at, this was side A, there's also side A for the below part. This is side B, but if you flip it over, this side B is the top. So you can actually use this side B, side A to create a little bit more of a variance. So even though I haven't even looked at the campaign stuff, there's still major replay value. So this is also, you get to see New York and Washington DC. You still get major replay value from the core part of the game, not having looked at the campaign stuff. So this is part of the campaign. You get campaign record she uh, sheets. And then, um, like I said, I don't want to go into huge detail on this, but these boards right here, these bound together boards, are all extra content for the campaign. And there's a little story section here I'm not going to go into huge detail on as well. Um, that is part of the campaign as well. So you can play into a deep story as well as just continuously play, you know, the side ABC that they give you um, from the very beginning to play. And that is Under Falling Skies. Uh, this is, what is this? Czech Games Edition. Um, this was released, I want to, like I said before, I want to say around the holiday season you know november december january um it was highly anticipated uh so it sold out very quickly um i think i got a hold of my copy sometime in january i want to say late january maybe even early february um because it sold out so fast um and i'm totally i totally do recommend this game it's super fun it's very exciting to play. Um, it is, like I said, more of a solo game. Uh, if you're into having somebody give you their input, or if you like the idea of having like, you know, think tank sessions with another person, because two two heads are always better than one, then for sure, definitely play um, with another player. But the interaction really only requires one player. And you should definitely check out the micro game. I have not checked it out, um, but this was based off of a micro game, I believe of the same name, um, that was apparently just really well done. And I believe it's only nine cards. Uh, I don't know if they have an official printed version aside from obviously this, but the original mini game I think was a nine card game. So you could play it with nine cards and that was all you needed. Uh, there's also an opposite side to all of the uh, descending sky stuff, and it's just much more difficult, just so we're aware. Uh, but you can find the micro game print and play files on boardgamegeek.com. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and like and subscribe, and until next time, guys... Peace.